Debate over Section 377A of the Penal Code continues to intensify weeks after the government indicated that it's considering its next steps on the law. Now, just days ago, Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong said that the matter isn't just about repeal, but acknowledging societal concerns over family and marriage. The government says it's looking at how to prevent the legal position on marriage from being challenged in the courts. Sherry Look gives us some possibilities. A colonial relic that's become one of modern Singapore's most divisive laws, Section 377A, which criminalizes sex between men, was first added to the penal code more than eight decades ago. Although it isn't enforced, it's remained a thorn in the side of Singapore's LGBTQ community. Challenges to the law have been repeatedly dismissed in court, most recently in February this year. But now, it looks like change might be on the horizon. There is that incremental shift within society uh, you know, that regards uh, 377A um, as a law um, you know, that Singapore should not retain. Um, you know, on its statute books. Um, you know, so so I think you know we also have it from um, ministers' uh, uh, comments. You know, in, in the wake of uh, that court of appeal uh, ruling, um, that they are looking to see um, how they could deal with uh, Section Three Seven Seven A. If the law is repealed, it becomes a matter for Parliament, not the courts. The government would have to. Uh, table a bill, which is a proposed law, uh, in Parliament. And because the 377 is found in the Penal Code, which is our primary criminal legislation, it is an ordinary legislation uh, to trigger for the amendment, uh, you know, to be to be effective. All that is needed is for um, you know 50 percent of 50 percent plus one MP. Uh, to vote in favour of the bill. The process might not end there. Those in favour of retaining the law have been calling for stronger provisions to safeguard marriage. One of the approaches mooted by experts is to define marriage as the monogamous union of a man and a woman in the constitution. Subsequent amendments would generally require the support of two-thirds of elected MPs. Another way could be getting the constitution to define marriage in reference to other legislation, like the Women's Charter. But this can ordinarily be changed with a simple majority. Whatever the changes, those watching the matter closely say it's important that the provisions don't violate the constitution's anti-discrimination clause. It's a question of, you know, how robustly uh, Parliament would like to uh, ring fence uh, the traditional conception uh, or rather the long-standing conception of marriage, of marriage uh, in, in, in Singapore. So uh, I think uh, in many ways, you know, the devil is in the details. But the law is just a start. Analysts say the government will need to do more to mend social risks, especially as society and its values evolve. Have a good grip on what the normative expectations are of Singaporeans and stand by them. Continue to strengthen family simply because family is so important. But at the same time, assure all Singaporeans, regardless of their background, their needs will be met and they will be safe in Singapore, right? I think we can do that. It starts off with, you know, careful conversations where we have to be sensitive to each other's aspirations. Singapore is currently one of nearly 70 countries which criminalise sex between men. Other former British colonies like Hong Kong and India have already repealed such laws.